Hey everybody, Matt from Eastwood. Today we're going to cover some tips and tricks when diagnosing poor TIG welds. I've found that many times a small correction can fix a big problem when you're having trouble with TIG welding. So let's get started with some of the basics. If you're unsure of where to set your machine when starting a TIG welding project, we suggest checking the settings chart to get yourself close. First, make sure you're using 100% argon and open the bottle to allow the gas to flow to your machine. Set your shielding gas flow to about 15 CFH when welding. Tungsten stick out varies greatly on the job and welding cup setup you're using. But a quick tip is to set the tungsten out no further than the diameter of your welding cup. Hold your torch angle when welding at about 70 to 75 degrees from the workpiece. A quick way to set up your torch angle is to set it straight up and down or 90 degrees to the surface and tilt the back cap 25 to 30 degrees back from the direction you're traveling when welding. If you're having trouble initiating an arc when welding, make sure the tip of your tungsten is about the same distance from the surface as the filler wire you're using to weld and you have good, clean ground connections. Also make sure that the metal you're welding is very clean. Sand or grind any paint, coatings, or rust off of the metal and clean with low VOC pre or acetone. Make sure that your collet and collet body match the diameter of your tungsten and all connections are tight. If you're having problems with burning through a panel or over penetrating when welding, there could be a few things that could cause the issue and can be easily corrected. If your weld settings are too high when welding, you can reduce your welding amperage either at the machine or on the pedal or switch on the fly while welding. Remember that you may need to back off of the amperage or foot pedal position on longer welds as the panel heat soaks and you get closer to the end of the weld joint. When TIG welding, there is a fine line between an ideal full penetration and burning a hole in the panel, especially on sheet metal. A tip for correcting this issue is to test adding more filler wire or filler wire more often to keep the panel from burning through. Increasing the speed of travel when welding can cure burn through when welding, but you may need to adjust your settings or technique to compensate and still get a good weld. Generally, when increasing your travel speed, you will also need to increase the frequency in which you add filler wire and also possibly the amperage of your machine. Make sure that your torch angle isn't too flat as the further you lay your torch down, the more it spreads the arc across or ahead of the weld puddle and overheats a much larger area than needed and could cause the issue as well. If you happen to dip the tungsten in the puddle or touch your filler wire to the tungsten, it has now been contaminated. The arc will now get much larger and wander around the workpiece, causing excessive heat into the metal. Uneven cut edges or gaps in a weld joint will be more prone to burn through as the edges will want to burn away from each other and open the gap up. Take the time to cut and adjust your weld joints so that there is little to no gap between the panels and you have nice fitment. Insufficient weld penetration can be dangerous and unsightly when welding. Minor changes in your settings or technique can solve this problem. These welds can be easily identified by a weld puddle that is mostly sitting on top of the metal and the weld sieve can easily break apart. Increasing the amperage or heat of the weld will give you more penetration and better fusion of the metal when you're welding. If you're unsure if your welder is rated to the thickness that you want to weld, check the chart on your machine. Make sure that you're getting proper input power to the machine and that you're using a good extension cord with your welder. When welding thicker metal or structural joints, it may be necessary to bevel the edges of the metal to get full penetration at the base of the weld seam. This also leaves a valley for you to add filler wire into and get full penetration. Contaminated welds can be frustrating and cause a weak weld that can be unsafe. Make sure you check the following causes out to cure these issues when welding. As a rule of thumb, TIG welding requires 100% argon. Make sure your bottle has the correct shielding gas in it and the bottle is open and isn't empty. Many gas regulators have a separate gauge for tank pressure to help you monitor the bottle level. Also make sure your machine is flowing approximately 15 CFH when you're welding. Make sure that you are working in an area where there isn't an outside wind or a fan or breeze that could blow your shielding gas away. Check to make sure that your torch connections are tight at the welder and the torch. A loose back cap or cup on the torch could allow the gas to escape before it reaches the workpiece. 
If using a gas lens, make sure that the screen on the collet body isn't plugged or blocked by weld spatter or dirt. Also make sure that the metal is free of any contaminants. Remove any paint, rust, or coating first, and then use acetone or low VOC pre to clean any grease or residue off of the metal. Don't forget to clean the edges and the back side of the weld seams as those hidden areas could cause occasional popping or spitting of the weld puddle, which can leave a pit in your weld. Make a practice also of cleaning your filler rod with a scuff pad and low VOC pre or acetone before using for the same reason. Use a dedicated stainless brush or scuff pad for TIG welding prep and low VOC pre or acetone for your final clean when welding. Make sure that the torch angle isn't too excessive as the welding gas could blow ahead of the puddle instead of over it. Excessive stick out of your tungsten as well as holding the torch too far from the workpiece could cause the shielding gas to float away from the puddle instead of staying over it. An unstable arc can cause difficulty in accuracy when welding and also makes starting the puddle very difficult. The tungsten should never touch the work surface when welding. If you happen to dip the tungsten in the puddle or stick the filler wire to the tungsten, it has now been contaminated and has changed the shape of the tungsten. This causes the arc to become inconsistent and wander when it comes off the tip of the tungsten. Be sure to evenly grind your tungsten long ways and not across the tungsten. Grinding the tip of the tungsten unevenly can cause the arc to come off at an odd angle. Grinding the tungsten across the tip will cause a turbulent arc that will wander. Make sure that the metal is free of any contaminants, remove any paint, rust, or coating first, and then use acetone or low VOC pre to clean any grease or residue off of the metal. Avoid welding too close to magnets as it will cause the TIG arc to pull or wander towards the magnet. We found that most magnets won't affect the arc if kept one to two inches or further from the weld puddle. Make sure that your torch angle isn't too excessive or your tungsten height isn't too far from the surface. Improper torch angle or height can cause the arc to jump or wander from where you want it to on the weld seam. Hopefully some of these quick tips will help you solve some of the issues that you've been having with your TIG welds and you'll be ready to lay some really nice welds on your next project. For all the welding supplies that we used in this video and more, make sure you visit eastwood.com.